Welcome to Hardy Party of Five and a Half. Welcome. How are you doing, Rebecca? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good today. How are you? Do you remember a few episodes ago when you surprised me yes. with a trip to New York to see the Music Man when we were interviewing Emma Crow, who's That's in right. the cast of Music Man? Oh, yes. And you totally blew my mind and Emma's mind. That was a darn good surprise. And then we went to New York, saw the show, and then met Emma at the stage door. Pat me on the back right here. I am. Mm-hmm. That was so good. That was good. Okay. <laughs> So because of that, yeah. I decided I was going to surprise you. You did. So I contacted someone mm-hmm. to see if they would be on the show. I can't believe it. And it's your favorite movie ever. Of all time. Of all time. So when she got back to me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. <laughs> so then I decided a way to surprise you was to send you a text. So I sent you a poem yes. to see if you could figure out who it was. Mm-hmm. So here's the poem. <clears throat> I'm kind of get my <laughs> kind of get my spoken word voice on. <laughs> Here's the poem, very dramatic. I'm ready. Roses are red, violets are blue. Whose name rhymes with smooch and wants to be on our podcast to talk to you? Okay, I know who my first guest was. Who I was, was like, <laughs> Turner and Hooch. <laughs> and I was like, how are we going to interview a dog? Because I know you didn't get Tom Hanks. Well, and also Turner is probably dead by now. Probably. That was a long time ago. Yeah, probably. But it was a Tom Hanks movie. It was a Tom Hanks movie. It was a league of their own. Yes. It was Marla Hooch. Oh my gosh. Because it rhymes Marla with smooch. Hooch, Do you get it? Hooch. Yes, I get it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And can you believe it happened? No, I, I'm still giddy. I'm. I could just die today and be the happiest person ever. There you go. You I'm are so welcome. Happy. Yes. Thank you, babe. We have surprised you each did other. So good. Take that. And this interview is phenomenal. She's one of the funniest people you will ever hear on this podcast. I mean, she's so hilarious. She really is. Her real name is Megan Cavanaugh, but everybody knows her as Marla Hooch. Side note, she's also Jimmy Neutron's mom, Judy Neutron, the voice of She's so talented. She's hilarious. She shows us pictures. So if you're on audio, you might want to flip over to YouTube because you don't want to miss these funny videos and pictures. Oh, hilarious. So without further ado, guys, love this interview with Megan Cavanaugh. I'm talking to Marla. (laughs) Guys are so cute. I'm so dying right now. Look at my shirt. Look at you. No crying in baseball. Okay, Marla, what you Marla, Megan, what you don't know is like in on next Monday is our 30th anniversary. Yep. We got married on a softball field. So we're oh. like big time baseball people. This is like icing on the cake for like a, almost an anniversary present. Yeah. Like, oh, I love that. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. That's wonderful. You are so lovely. I cannot believe that we're actually, that you just said you would talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm a hairdresser. I've been telling all my clients, I'm going to get to talk to Marla Hooch this week. <laughs> Megan Cavanaugh, I can't believe I'm talking to you. I'm so excited that you're on Hardy Party at Five and a Half. Marla Hooch from A League of Their Own and so many other wonderful things that you've done. We want to jump right in, but first we got to start at the beginning. Tell us about your childhood. Did you play sports? You grew up in Chicago. Did you love, always love baseball? Like what, tell yeah. us about it. So I grew up um, just the very first suburb west of the city of Chicago in Oak Park River Forest. It's, they share stuff. So, and, um, and I'm the youngest of five. And I, my dad was a huge Cubs fan. <laughs> so uh, Cubs were just part of my, my vernacular from day one. Yeah. Um, Cubs, Bears, Blackhawks, Bulls, all of uh, anything Chicago. Yeah. Um, but mostly baseball. Baseball is my dad's huge time passion. Mm-hmm. And they're both still alive. My parents are both 92. Oh, and, um, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And so I, I did have a love of baseball because of him, but I didn't play. I didn't play softball until I was probably, I think I was 19. Okay. And I went to downtown. I was playing in the Chicago Theater League. Okay. 
and they play in, in Chicago, they play 16 inch, which is like, it's like a melon ball. Yeah. And, um, and you don't use a glove. So I had learned to play baseball, softball, you know, yeah. with this giant ball. And, and I had um, a guy named Paul Roeder who taught me how to hit. And he would make me play pepper. He'd make me do 10 in a row before we could go in. And then at the last one, he'd throw it really hard. So we'd have to start over. So I, <laughs> he, he really, I, I taught me how to hit. And I played in this recreational theater league and I loved it. And it was really fun. I played second base and it was a co-ed league. And, yeah. um, and that was my beginning of my like playing of baseball. Right. I was an athlete as a kid. Um, I, I did track and volleyball. Um, I was, um, I rode my bike every, as I did centuries before anybody did centuries. Like I was, I was a huge cyclist. Yeah. Um, I worked for Bicycling Magazine as a young woman and wow. Rodel Press that does bicycling and runner's world and prevention and men's health and all of those magazines. Um, and yeah, and I was, so I was, yes, I was athletic and I, um, oh, that's sort of my beginning. Yeah, that's <laughs> so cool. So uh, yeah, we say so almost the same with me. I didn't play softball until later. I didn't play on any organized teams, but one day he called me and asked me out. And then the next week he asked me out and the next week he asked me to play softball. And so that's kind of how that started. I mean, and I, I was like, kind of like you just naturally athletic, but had to really pick it up later in life. Yeah. So yeah, that's so interesting. Okay, so A League of Their Own, which is Rebecca's favorite movie ever. Favorite movie. We have yes. a list of movies in his office. It's pictures of our favorite, like a picture of each of our favorite movies. There's five of us in this family. And six, we have a girl that had lived with us for a while. So we have six pictures. Mine's been A League of Their Own forever. Forever. So yes, yeah. my favorite. Awesome. Awesome. So A League of Their Own is your first movie, right? That's crazy. That yes, is it was. Crazy. And I got it without an agent. Really? Yeah. So how did that happen? Well, you had to play baseball before you could um, even read for the movie. Right. And the person that I was living with, I had a roommate named Jeff Hermanson, who was um, a trainer. And so women were calling our house. You know, shared phone and you had a voice machine, right? Was, yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah. So um, back in the dinosaur age. We so, know. <laughs> um, so he, um, I answered the phone one day and it was this gal, Kathleen York, who was saying, um, you know, I, there's this movie and I want to audition for it. She was like, are you from Chicago? Because she could detect my Chicago accent. And I said, yes. And she said, they're looking to be in this movie. And I thought, oh, maybe I could just be an extra, like, you know, a player on the team. I wasn't I didn't have an agent. I was, yeah, yeah. I had done a ton of theater and I was union. I had my SAG card and my equity card, but okay. you know, I, I just, I had done commercials. That's how I got my SAG card. Yeah. So, um, so she gave me the script and when I, oh, I want to be Marla. Like I was naive enough to think that I could be that without an agent or without any, yeah. anything. Yeah. And I started um, so I called, she gave me the number of the casting director and I called and the casting director answered the phone. Oh my goodness. It doesn't ever happen. Yeah. All the pieces fell into place. Everything just fell into place. <laughs> so to Amanda Mackey, the casting director and told her that I was um, wanting to audition for this. And she said, um, the game this week is full, but send me your picture and resume and everything that we talked about in our conversation. And I'll see about getting you in the next game. I said, great. I thought, oh, yay. So I sent it off. And then I went with Kathleen and Jeff, the trainer, to the first, to, to and I was, because I would became her warm up partner. I was throwing the ball with her and I would, you know, we, I was training with her. Yeah. To get her ready for this audition. <laughs> so um, we get to the park and they say, all the actresses stay on the field, everybody else go to the stands. And she grabs my, my shirt and she says stay here and I'm like I don't know I'll get in trouble I'm not sure and so they came up to me and it was all celebrities from the 90s you know it was like Mariel Hemingway and Paula Poundstone and Marla Maples and um um Leah Thompson and, and me you know and 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 they came up to me and they were like I'm sorry um do you have an audition? And I was like, well, I spoke to Amanda about playing in next week's game, but I'd really rather play in this week's game. And they were like, you have an appointment? And I lied and I said, 
Yes. And they said, okay, go get a jersey. And I was like, oh my God. So then I was in and I had, I was, I had been talking to this agency that wanted to sign me commercially because I was doing commercials. They were called Spotlight. And the agent was Pat Brady. And she, um, but, the, and I knew they had a theatrical department. So I played ball in this audition and I played the best ball of my life. Oh, <laughs> I nice. Fired. I don't think I've ever played better. <laughs> and they came up to me afterwards and they were like, I'm sorry, who are you? That's so funny. Who are you with? And I lied, second lie. And I said I was with Spotlight, which I wasn't. <laughs> so I called them. This was like on a Friday. And I called them and said, um, you might be getting a call on Monday about me um, because I did this audition and I told them you were my agent. I name. went through commercially, but not theatrically. <laughs> and, and sure enough, they got a call on, on Monday. And they so they hip pocketed me. That's what they call it when they don't sign you and they just like represent you. And um, this was a very long, arduous audition process because after um, that game, and you got to read. Then I had to meet with David Anspaugh, who was the director then. It wasn't Penny Marshall. Oh, okay. And it was 20th Century Fox that was doing it. And um, Daryl Hannah and Jim Belushi were the leads. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it was a different totally movie. different. And, um, and so I, I was getting married. This was in 1990, okay? Yeah. So I, was getting, I was getting married in May, and this was February. So I did all, they, they had me meet with Rod Dado and I had to play ball one-on-one -on -one and I, he, he had to like, you know, he was seeing if I could hit and run and slide and do, I'll do all the things. And then they said, we're going to, we're going to New York. We're, you know, we'll let you know, basically. And I said, well, I am getting married in May. And um, if I'm canceling my <laughs> wedding, I need to know because I will cancel my wedding for this. Yeah, right. Yeah, going yeah. further. <laughs> I mean, I just kept sort of moving along in the process. And I was like, how is this happening? This is my first movie audition. Yeah. And it, that's so crazy. And then the whole thing got shelved. 20th Century Fox said, we're not doing it. David oh. Anspaugh was out and it, got, it was done. It was not moving any further. And I thought, wow, look how far I got with my first movie. I yeah. had to, I had to um, um, learn the song. It had to be you for one of my auditions yeah so <laughs> I was I was fine with it and then I heard it had to be you on the radio like two weeks later and I was like <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete mess I was crying and it was gonna be so great <laughs> it was gonna be so great but I thought yeah. you know you went really you got so far in your first audition you really need to give yourself a little pat on the back yeah so right. a year later I get a phone call Penny Marshall is looking for you what? what? Oh, wow. I was like, what? So, oh so um, I went at, and uh, Spotlight had called me to tell me this. And now they're hip pocketing me again because the, the it's back. And now Penny's directing it and she's producing it. And it's going to be Columbia Sony and Parkway Productions, her, her production company. And they're looking at you for Marla. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like real. This is getting really real. <laughs> So I, I say to Jeff, come on, we got it. We got it. You got to train again. I got to get back in shape because oh, we're God. doing this. <laughs> and, um, and then I went and I met with them. And I, I mean, it was just a hugely yeah. long process. Oh, and then they had this very unconventional callback. And Deborah Winger was now cast in the Gina Davis part. Okay. But it was Deborah Winger and Lori Petty as sisters. Yeah. And uh, Rosie O'Donnell and Tracy Reiner. And I think Freddie Simpson, who plays Miss Georgia. Um, yeah. Evelyn, I mean, um, not Evelyn, uh, Ellen C got let yeah, yeah. He, Those gals were cast uh -huh. and they told me, be prepared to read any role from my, and I was like, okay. So I looked at the other roles and I memorized everything. And, you know, I, and when I got there, all I did was read for Marla. They just kept having me read with Marla. We were reading in a group, which is, a, that is very unconventional. Like you never do that. You do it with the casting director and the director. Yeah. And there's no other people except maybe the star. You yeah. know what I mean? So this was like totally yeah. different. So I was leaving that audition and I felt pretty good about it. And Rosie followed me out and she said, you're the best Marla we've seen so far. Wow. And I didn't take the compliment. I heard the so far and I thought, oh, yeah. oh I'm not going to get this. <laughs> like, 
this is so I went home and I called my best friend Amy she lives in Wisconsin and we were having a phone call and all of a sudden it, the operator broke in yes like they did back then and said you have an emergency phone call from spotlight will you take the call and I was like Amy I'll call you back <laughs> and it was my agent Pat Brady screaming you got the part you got the part you got the part she was screaming I'm crying oh my, my friend walks in the door she sees me she's like ah she knows exactly what's happening we're all crying and like start tomorrow you're gonna go you're gonna do baseball training starting tomorrow oh my gosh I was a waitress oh at Ed Dubovic's restaurant I was oh. like I gotta give him notes like you know <laughs> so I um yeah and it, I I oh it goodness. was I moved my shifts so I could be, work at night so that I could because we weren't getting paid for any right. of this rehearsal time oh yeah. really okay no not until we got to Chicago and got per diem did we start getting paid and then the first day of sh once shooting started in in mid-July then your paycheck started so yeah. it was did spotlight give you like a big fat thank you because you had they did this much work to give you to get you a job you know what they went out of business and kept my last three checks oh, oh no but luckily i had a lawyer in the family and my my cousin danny did, <laughs> went after it and got me got me some money he didn't get all of it but oh this my is God. how i looked at it if i had to pay those three checks to be in this movie, to drop oh, yeah. their name, yeah. I'm a, I, I had made a lot of money doing yeah. it. I was like, you know, it was more money than I had ever made. Yeah. So I was just like, well, that's business. That's show business. <laughs> that's show business. You know, it's I'm out. But I'm in. It worked out. <laughs> yeah. So that is awesome. What that is, awesome that's story. what happened. That is so great. Do you oh. relive this story often? I do. do. You get to t do you tell people this story? I do. Yeah. Okay. And, and sometimes it's even has it's even longer. I mean, yeah. I, I try to keep it <laughs> short because I mean, it was just so such a long. It was. Like, it was huge. But I love well, it. It's just a crazy story too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just worked out so well. Well, I'm glad you. Oh, really and I have it. to tell you. I'm sorry. I got no, go, 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 you go. <laughs> okay. So I had all these little things around the house, all these little um sayings, and this is what it was. It was I am the greatest baseball player. I am Marla Hooch from A League of Their Own. This or something better now manifests for me in totally satisfying and harmonious ways for the highest good of all concerned. And I would always repeat, for all concerned. And I had them everywhere. Oh. And I visioned myself in a trailer, but I didn't know what a trailer looked like. So I visioned myself in like a pop-up, you know, a camper. Yeah. I had, you know, I, but I mantra this. Oh my God. And I swear to God, I feel like it helped me get it. Like it just kept me, you know, forward moving yeah oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness that is so <laughs> funny i'm so glad you tell this story over and over oh, again and i'm so glad we have it recorded <laughs> uh, that is great <laughs> that is you became great. marla you became I did. marla I did. you embodied and, and you know penny made us write um out uh when we were in rehearsals for the movie we only had a few days of rehearsal but she had us write out um bios like about the character like a backstory were, for them a backstory yeah. yeah and i wish i had it i don't i don't think i have it anymore i i had it and i it would have been great to have that in my scrapbook yeah. but i yeah. don't have it yeah that would be that would have been great <laughs> <laughs> oh my word so you get on the set now it's your first movie and you're on the set with gina davis and tom hanks so what is right. that like well, so Gina wasn't in it. It was Deborah Winger was for a long time. Oh, okay. Well, up until Madonna got cast. Oh, okay. And so we were still doing, we did months of, of training yeah. with for University of Southern California um, coaches. And, and it was intense. It was really, yeah. really intense training. And so um, Deborah was with us and she was a UCLA, UCLA Bruin and the Bruins and the Trojans have a big rivalry. Yeah. So she actually rented out UCLA one day and <laughs> so we could have a practice there because she was like, we're in Trojan territory. You know, she, <laughs> so anyway, when Madonna got hired, she ended up having to leave. I, I don't know really what went down. I, I just know that it didn't work out and she was gone. Madonna was in. And then here comes Gina Davis. And okay. now we're about to shoot. So we had like, I don't, maybe a week oh, wow. Wow. with Madonna and Gina. Um, maybe, well, Madonna was there a little bit longer 
maybe it had been a three weeks. I don't remember. I don't remember the timeline. But anyway, um, Jean, so so I have got we kind of all knew each other. We were sort of a team before we went and did the movie. So then we added in Tom Hanks and Gary Marshall and all the other guys, you know, and like we had a, a reading of the script, a table read of the script. And I remember meeting Tom um, and he wasn't the mega star. He was a, definitely a star and he was rising yeah. and yeah. he was a big, which is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. And, um, and so I was like, you know, he came up to me, he's like, hi, Tom Hanks. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to introduce yourself. <laughs> I was like, I'm Megan Cavanaugh, I play Marla. Um, you know, so that, yeah. So it was, it was intimidating, but it was, Madonna was at the peak of her career. Oh, yeah. yes, she was the Washington Monument. So yeah. meeting her was, and playing with her. And the first day of shooting, <laughs> So all these gals are my maid of honors. I mean, are my, my bridesmaids. Yeah. And, you know, it was so surreal. It was just so surreal. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. incredible. So were you, did you understand at the time and was it nerve wracking to know that you were portraying and going back and representing these women from the All-American Baseball League? Like, yeah. how did that feel? How, did you, so, you understand that at the time? You, you oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had baseball consultants with us from the AAGPBL with us. Okay. And Pepper Pear Davis, I met at my audition. Um, I happened to be talking to her during a break. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, oh, we had to get to audition for it. And this is at the baseball audition. I said, and I learned the song. And I sang the song to her. And she said, I wrote that. And I said, oh, oh wow. I did not. Like, I was like, I just sang this to the person who wrote it. Like, <laughs> everything I'm telling you, everything just completely. Anyway, I, I, it was our, all of us, our utmost goal was to make these women proud, to tell their story because it had, it was absolutely nothing in the history books or anything about them. And it was yeah. a league that lasted for 11 years. Yeah. And it, they did this. This was their effort for the war. You know, it's a much different mentality than, than it is now. There was a real coming together of, of our country during that time to mm -hmm. fight Hitler mm -hmm. and, um, and Mussolini. And, you know, and I mean, but there was like, everybody was doing their effort. People were, you know, they were doing the foil, the tin foil drives and the, you know, they were doing, they were really coming together. And so these women felt obligation, you know, yeah. Yes, they get to play ball. Yes, they're making a lot of money, but this was their effort for the war. And so they had to keep baseball alive. That was what, what they were thinking. And that's what they were being told until the year after, you know, and they said, never mind. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it made a huge impact on us. Yeah. And, um, and they, would, they gave us like um, a whole a list of things that they would say different like idioms so that when we were in the field we could say things that would be appropriate for the okay. time yeah um I don't remember any of them but I have the list <laughs> yeah. yeah is that where dirt in the skirt came from yes okay yes. that was written on a on a bus oh they yeah, yeah. Skirt written, I think it's on the racing bells yeah. bus uh-huh and um yeah dirt in the skirt came from that and um I'll, I'll, there was a bunch of stuff yeah yeah just think things of the time too that weren't uh -huh. even specific to uh the women playing ball it was yeah. you know you know anyway yeah. so they and we would constantly they they were with us so we'd go up to them and say okay i'm doing this right now what could i do or what could i say in this moment that you know like just to have right. sort of chatter uh -huh. and you know they would give us stuff and it was it, it, it so after the movie was out um, the women, some of the women wanted to do baseball card shows and they wanted to get, you know, they were, had been inducted into the hall of fame and they wanted to do this. And the sport, the promoters at these, at these baseball card shows said, well, yeah, you can come, but you have to bring some of the actresses from the movie. Mm. It's like, come on guys, <laughs> they're in the, come on. Yeah. But, so we got to, Tracy Reiner and I got the phone call. Will you come yeah. to this baseball card show with us? They won't like let us in unless we bring people from the movie. And we were like, Goodness. Yes, we will. <laughs> Storm the game. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that. And that was, that was really fun. We, they became good friends. 
Yeah, that's so great. We um we have three boys and it's required watching for anybody that they date. Oh yeah. They will sit on the couch with me and watch this movie. And they are, I mean, you think that the credits and like we're close to the we're going to the museum, you know, and all of that. We're getting close, but no, you sit, sit you sit yeah, because you they, they do the whole right. time where they're playing and I'm sobbing every time I cry. You do. 50,000 times I have ball and ball and ball at the end when they're playing baseball. Oh, so I'm so glad to hear that you guys have a bond with them and that you really oh, yeah. understood the, the gravity of what you were doing. I just found out there's only 47 women left. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah. They're, okay. So I'm very good friends right now. So Pepper Pear Davis died in, oh, I'm bad with years. Yeah. Ish. And um, Maybelle Blair is now sort of the gal that I've been hanging out with okay. when we go to shows. We do we do um, uh, we go to baseball. Uh, we go to baseball fields and we throw out first pitches and we sort of do appearances. Yeah. And um, her and Shirley Berkovich just passed away. Um, Maybelle and Shirley were hilarious together. <laughs> they were they were like Laurel and Hardy. They were so funny. So great. Maybelle's 95 or 96 right now and she still goes out she goes she goes to all these baseball for all um training camps for kids she's very she's starting she and Shirley started a um they're trying to do a museum um in Rockford called the IWBC it's the International Women's Baseball Center and it's going to have um interactive things like um training for umps umpires and um how like management jobs and like all kinds of like they really uh, want women yeah ball not softball they're pushing baseball, baseball. which is exciting and yeah. and so that's her baby maybell's this is her she's dedicated to this yeah. and she said she wants to do it while she's still on this side of the grass yeah on <laughs> <laughs> the other the grass when so oh, I love that. That's well, and fun. it's crazy because when I first saw the movie, I had never heard of any of this. And I'm a big baseball fan and a history buff. Right. And I had never heard of it. So it's just awesome right. that the movie came out and we're more aware of what these ladies did back then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And my mom's a librarian and I was researching the role and I was trying to find stuff and I couldn't like I couldn't find anything. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. But Penny had seen a um a documentary that had been done for PBS by Kelly Kendall, whose mom um, uh, uh, was a player. Okay. I think it was his mom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's her mom. And he had put together some, some old footage from the yeah. women that had footage, you know, and he put together this documentary and Penny, that's what Penny saw that made her go, what is this? What and is this? Yeah. this needs to be a movie. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Very cool. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So we feel like uh, you stole the show. I mean, oh. I people probably say that to you all the time, I think, but we feel like you totally stole the show as Marla Hooch. I mean, in our house, we say Marla Hooch, the Hooch, like we say it all the time. <laughs> so I want you to, I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's adorable. I have so many people that tell me they've named their dogs Marla Hooch. <laughs> oh, we got a great name named Marla Hooch. Oh, we got a spam. That'll be our next uh, dog. Yeah, next there dog. Yeah. Our dog Marla is Hooch. actually our dog is actually named Wrigley. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Yes. I approve. <laughs> I, yes, I thought you would like that. Um, so give us your take on a few iconic scenes. Tell us about the tryout in the gym. I'm sorry. It's okay, honey. That was good form. Good, honey. Good, good. Nice, nice. That's a rope, honey. <laughs> good girl, good, good. That's right, honey, two eye. She's got an eye like the Maggio. Good, good, good. Okay, Marla. Now, lefty. She's your daughter? Yeah. Yeah. Her mom's dead. It's just the two of us. 
coach of the American Legion team said if she was a boy, he'd have took her to the state tournament. And he said if she was a boy, I'd be in New York talking to the Yankees instead of living in this place. All right, that's enough. You can bring her over here. Okay, Marta. Come here. Boys, hit the shower. Oh, Was that, were you hitting? Yeah. And are that you was hitting? all me. All really? Oh my you're gosh. A, you're a all switch me. hitter. You're a switch hitter. Yeah, well, I learned. You <laughs> learned. So in, in 90, yes. when I was um, preparing, you know, for the, the audition, I saw that she was a switch hitter. So I had Jeff help me learn to bat left-handed a year before I needed to, which was good. Oh, good and then in 91, when I needed, I, when, before I went back to audition, when they called me and said, you're doing this, I was like, we got to practice. <laughs> and I, I, so I learned to, and by the time I did that scene, I was doing 85 miles per hour, both sides in the oh, game. And you were crushing it. I was crushing it. <laughs> I was yeah. crushing it. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think just being um, an athlete helped. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and I was dedicated. I, yeah. I mean, and the, when we shot that, I tell this story a lot, but I, I'm going to tell you because it's, it's a great story. <laughs> I, we were in a different set and they said, we need back in here right away. And they, there was no Teamster driver. I don't know why. I don't know what happened, but they threw me into a BMW convertible. Some guy drove and we went a hundred miles an hour with a police escort to get to the set. Oh, <laughs> To do the gym goodness. scene? Yes. Oh, so wow. they zoom me there. And I mean, I am like, I like fast cars and I, I'm in a BMW and it's a convertible. And I just was like, ah! oh, I'm my so God. excited. So that awesome. alone was like thrilling and fun. Yeah. And then we get to the set. I come in, I'm getting in wardrobe. I come to the set and Penny's like, oh, mama, we're going to use Megan's double. I said, Penny, <laughs> it's just like raced me here. You gotta give me a chance. Yeah. And she was like, all right, hit every ball. Like, <laughs> you sound just like her. You sound okay. just like Penny. She was, she was, I love her so much. Um, so she, I, it's a live co college pitcher. Hit every ball. That's a, that's a big ask. Yeah. 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 For sure. <laughs> Throw me contact. And I did. I did. Oh. I reached and I I just I hit every ball and I they were changing the canister on the film, the film canisters. They kept changing them. I mean, I was, I don't know how many at bats I oh, took. I, mean, I, I was not at all that, all that training led up. You're to in the zone. Moment. All that all day. Yeah. My arms were killing me by oh, the end God. of the day. Like I had just been hitting, 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 hitting. Yeah. And, um, and they said I had to, like, the next day when I came back to that set, we were going to do some pickups. Um, Penny said they they presented me with a batting trophy. Oh, <laughs> oh I should, should have brought the picture so I could have showed you. If you want to wait? I'll run and get it. Okay, it's, go for it. Go for it. You yeah, got it? it? Okay, sure. can, yeah. am I going to be able to jump? I think I'm going to be able to get it. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay. okay. <laughs> so this is the gymnasium in New Harmony, Indiana, batting champion dated 8 17 91. Here's where I'm being presented. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's Here wonderful. Is I don't know if you could see it. Yeah. yeah. And then here's a closer up picture. Oh my goodness. That is fantastic. That's, that's so fun. Okay. So unfortunately, the the um trophy broke in a move. Oh. <laughs> I don't have it anymore, but I have the picture. Oh, oh goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, listen, we have we play Coed Southball still. We play we have a game on Monday night, which is actually uh, a week from our anniversary. We will play on our anniversary. So if you want us to fly you out here, I mean, because <laughs> We could always use a girl in the lineup like you. Where, where <laughs> are you? We're, we're in Texas. Texas. We're in south of Fort Worth. Oh, I'm in Texas. No, -uh. I'm in the woodlands. No oh, way. Oh, you're in Houston. Yeah, Houston. Okay. Yeah, oh, Houston. Yeah. yeah. Oh, please. We can get yes. you out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing every weekend this month. I'm doing, or in August, I'm doing appearances. Oh. So wow. I'm, I'm kind of busy because it's the 30th and lots of people yeah. want to talk. 
Yeah. So, oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's yeah. so good. Okay. The next one is the train station. Goodbye. Yeah. I wish you had a decent myth. Maybe I better not go. No, you could release it. It'll be okay. No, I mean, who's going to take care of you? Cook for you? Help you take care of the equipment? Don't you worry about me. You're going to play baseball. I'm not going to know anybody. Come on, huh? Nothing's ever going to happen here. You got to go where things happen. Are you coming? See how it works is, the train moves, not the station. I do. Oh, this is making me sick. Write to me, honey. I love you. that like so <clears throat> it was my ex-husband's birthday it was july 16th i'll never forget it because i had to there's a scene that got cut out of the movie that's on the blu-ray where marla is like shoveling food on the train just yeah. eating and eating oh wait, this let me talk about before we get on the train sorry yeah. <clears throat> so i'm with eddie jones the guy who plays my dad and um and we are shooting the scene and um marla's i have to cry you can't tell that i'm crying in in the in the but i i was bawling i was bawling all day long i mean i was crying 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 cry, and then to the point where i couldn't cry anymore yeah and penny came up to me and she goes that's all right listen i'm gonna give you an ammonia tablet or i say action you're gonna pop it <laughs> sniff and then the tears will come and then i'll say action and we'll go and i was like okay so all right here we go action <laughs> Oh. <laughs> crying you know i i must have done i'm guessing 18 tablets it's ammonia like i'm sniffing yeah. ammonia yeah. yeah 18 i'm it was so many i just felt oh, like God. my floors my my face smelled like a floor like a mop you know oh, like it was just goodness. terrible so at we do the scenes we, we penny does a lot of coverage so i mean we did that all day long we were doing that and at the end of the day they said okay um we're going to try to get the shot on the uh, 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 you know it's like sunset and they only have a small amount of time to get the shot on the on the train where we're we're on the train on the way to Wrigley and I'm supposed to be eating like just yeah shoveling. I'm eating macaroni and cheese and whole glasses of milk and they told <laughs> me you will have a spit bucket because when we will we'll, we'll cut and you'll be able to spit it out. Yeah. They never, they never cut. So I'm just eating and eating and I smell <laughs> like ammonia and I'm having macaroni and cheese and milk. And, 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 you know, John Lovitz is improving the whole time going, you know, see that cow, you want to eat it? Like, and I'm just eating, 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 like shoveling. Finally, they yell cut. I thought I was going to barf because I had oh, eaten yeah. so much food. Yes. And we, we cut for the night, you know, everybody go home. And it's my husband's birthday. And he's like, let's go get ice cream for my birthday. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to love it right now. Like, you know, not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh, my goodness. That uh, is absolutely disgusting. And they cut that whole scene? They did. But they the scene is in the deleted scenes okay, yeah. on the Blu-ray. Um, I've never watched. Yeah. I got to get that thing out and look at it. It's There are a lot of scenes. Um, I'm kind of laughing while I'm eating and, and you know, I can't, I mean, we have this much time, nobody yeah. can swim around and, right. you know, 
because the sun is setting and got to get the shot, you know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Tell us about Charm School. You children will have regular classes at Charm and Beauty School. For what? Every girl in this league is going to be a lady. And gracefully and grandly. 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 All right, girls, come back. And sip down. Don't slurp. Sip down. Don't slurp. Sip down. Don't slurp. Sip down. Heads up, back straight, and sit. Right over left. Legs always together. A lady reveals nothing. <laughs> Stop. Ah. The hair, soften and shorten. The eyebrows, thin and separate. There should be two. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Lovely. What do you suggest? A lot of night games. I wrap. <laughs> Separate. Well, there should be the two. <laughs> south side of Chicago, um, at some conservatory place. It was really pretty. Um, the, I, I, my reaction at when she says a lot of night games and I kind of go like looking to the right, to the left, like, I didn't know what to do after that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, do I walk off? Do yeah. I, yeah. You no, know, we hadn't talked it through, so I didn't know. <laughs> and it is my first movie. So I was literally just kind of like, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Somebody tell me something. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was, um, it was, so, you know, the whole movie was so much fun to do. Um, and I always, I, you know, I'm in the scene where they like ladies, you know, you know do your, cross your legs and sip the tea. Yeah. And I can never find me. Like I look for me <laughs> and I don't remember where I was sitting or who I was near, uh -huh. but I'm not, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it was, I don't, it was a lot of fun and, yeah, and everybody yeah. was super nice. I was probably cutting up. And John Lovitz was saying things like, you know, you really are an attractive woman. You know, you're, you know, they, they make you sound like you're, you're ugly, but you're really an attractive woman. I was like, thanks, John. <laughs> I'm laughing all the way to the bank, brother. Yeah, all right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Almost, except for Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's that hanging out there. Yeah, right. Oh, I got okay. a little money back. My cousin got me some money. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, so the Suds Bucket, you've got... You're, you're singing the Nelson. I'm singing the Nelson, baby. Thinking of you. So others I've seen. What did you do? Not that we just gave her a dress. You're not allowed to lick her. All right, you guys, go ahead, go ahead. I'll get one. Oh 
oh my god so <clears throat> that that bar was was in the town next door to where i grew up okay. i knew the owners i played volleyball with one of the owners what? Oh, wow. like yeah like i mean it's called fitzgerald's in berwin illinois it's still called fitzgerald's as far as i know um and they have never changed the decor it, since they did the movie. So I went back there for a, I think it was a 40th high school reunion and it was at Fitzgerald's and everybody was like, Kevin, oh, you got to sing. It had to be you. And I was like, not happening, not <laughs> happening, kids, no. Uh, um, exact stage with the back, like the yeah. painting on the wall, like it was- it's The same. It was crazy. Anyway, um, it was hometown girl does good because I had moved to LA and then I got this and came back to Chicago land area and shot a ton of stuff. And, um, and we were, um, it was, oh, I have a picture. <laughs> do, let's do pictures because we have them right here. Um, I have a, um, I had to wear a microphone. Um, I had to wear, no, not a microphone. I had a thing in my ear so I could hear the music. Yeah. And um, the, where's the picture? Come on. Um, and when I, when I, they would, they would, the musicians behind me were real musicians, but they weren't really playing. They were pretending to play yeah. because, um, you know, because it's, it's too hard that with sound, you can't, you can't do it. Why don't I have those pictures in here? <laughs> That's not right. So was, um, it, was it quiet in there and you were singing? Yeah, anyway, here it is. Oh, here they are. Yeah. What, what? Was it so, quiet in there and you were singing? Or oh, you yeah, were silent. It, yeah, it was silent. <laughs> so I had, I had this in my ear that yeah. played the music so I could hear it. Yeah. Nobody else could hear Nobody it. Nobody else could hear it. And, um, okay, so this is me in my girdle. I don't know if I should show you this. Be honest. Um, so I had this, um, I have a 1940s girdle on. Oh, this is the, oh my. the battery pack yeah. on my leg. Oh my um, goodness. Here's, here's another picture. I'm calling it my torture device. Um, <laughs> and then these are um, pictures of Marla that, yes. that they did hair and makeup pictures. That is Marla's hair right there. Yep. Yep. And um, yeah, it was the Suds Bucket at Fitzgerald's and Berwyn. I have the dates July 20th to 26th. It's like right around this time, 30 wow. years ago. Oh, wow. Or 31. So back to one last question on. A league of their own it has such an impact on me as i've already told you and my kids and my family what what truly did it mean to you i mean it's still stuck with you you're still telling the stories like yeah what um that movie changed my life yeah um after i got after we were done with filming i had agents calling me i couldn't get arrested before um <laughs> you know before yeah. uh, this movie and it gave me my career it gave me a great group of friends. I'm, um, you know, the peaches, we get together every so often and, you know, nothing there. It's like an extended family, really. Yeah. I lived at Penny Marshall's house with my new baby and my ex-husband when we were, wow. um, when we just got, when we, had, yeah, I flew back to Chicago to have my baby and I missed the premiere. And then um, when he was six weeks old, he's 30 now, right? Oh, wow. Oh my God. He was six weeks old. We flew back and LA and Penny let us live in her guest house. And I, you know, I, this, but beyond me and my career, yeah. it was <laughs> what it has done for young women who want to play ball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had more stories told to me about how this was the, the, the movie everybody would play on their way to the championship game to you know get them all riled up and yes. and um and how it made people want to play ball and yeah. what better what better what better and 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 we also it, it gave the women of the AAGPBL um you know because this story was told by this film and it was such such a success by the way it's the highest grossing baseball movie of all time Wow. Yeah, like, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, yeah. And that's I mean, it, it, and, you know, it really helped them be put on the map and they get their their stories told. And, you know, they're doing a new series, um, Amazon Prime coming out August 12th. Um, they're yep. going to be doing a 
a, a, a TV show. Yes. And, um, and I got to see the pilot and I got, we went, I was in Rockford at the, at Byer Stadium and they were doing a 30th anniversary party and um, the Amazon Prime people had a premiere there and I got to um, be part of the, uh, I moderated after watching the pilot, I moderated a, a discussion. Wow. That's the so cast amazing. and the creative people. And it was, it was amazing. So I'm, I have high hopes for yeah. this show and I hope it, it does really well. They shot, they shoot all their baseball stuff where we shot our baseball um, TV show. When we did the TV show, there were six episodes on CBS. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the same ball field. They use the same okay. ball field that we used for the uh, TV. Show. That's so great. That's so awesome. My oldest son just texted me yesterday and said in all caps, did you see there's a TV show in the League of Their Own? Yeah. <laughs> They all know how much. We yeah, love they it. know. They know to let you know, don't yep. they? Yeah. Okay, we've talked about one classic, but then there's a classic for me, oh gosh. which I love. A League of Their Own too. It, it is one of them. It's in my top five movies. Okay. So there's Jimmy Neutron too. Yeah. And you are Judy Neutron. I did not know this <laughs> before. Good. You are Jimmy Neutron's mom. You're so talented. I am. I'm. I'm Jimmy's mom. I'm the voice of his fort and Vox. <laughs> I'm also a uh, guest characters on the TV show. Um, yeah, it was, uh, that was an amazing, uh, was Johnny Quasar, but because of Quasar, I think is part of Zenith maybe. Yeah. Um, Quasar is a, is a brand name and they wouldn't let us use the name Quasar. Oh, so wow. they, um, I gave him his middle name, Isaac. James Isaac Neutron because they let us improv a lot on that sh on the TV show or actually in the movie too they let us we, they would let us you know just take a pass do do whatever you want to do and we yeah. would yeah. Um, my friend Mark DiCarlo who I did Second City with um, he and um, and I are, are he's like one of my best pals he um, he knew the producers of the, the movie well, actually, they were going to make it into a TV show and then, it, and then it morphed into a movie and then it became, it had a lot of iterations. So yeah. Mark was the one that got me the audition. He said, listen, I'm friends with Marla Hooch. <laughs> Could we audition together? And they said, sure. And they, which is also, you don't get to like audition with each other stuff. Yeah. And we have great chemistry. So, you know, we played off each other a lot and um, it, yeah, it was, really fun and we would have sessions where we would we would um record with everybody there which is also not what they do in voiceovers very often yeah. so every, you know they had all these microphones set up and some people were sharing mics we had to be really really quiet because yeah. you know and if and they were it, it, there was so much laughter in this room and there was if you ruined a take from somebody who wasn't in a sheltered like room they had a couple of yeah. rooms and then it was a big room with a lot of microphones and we were sharing and, you know, so, you know, Rob Paulson, who plays Carl and Carl's parents, and he's done a million things. He is hilariously funny. He would say stuff and we would just be like, <laughs> you know, I don't want to ruin this. We were laughing so hard. Oh, so fun. Such great times doing that, that voice. And, you know, you don't have to dress up. You don't have to wear makeup. Yeah, right. That's what I it's, was going to say. It's got to be the Go best. Up. Yeah. Right. That's what I was going to say. In your pajamas if you want it. Yes. yes. Before and people were in their pajamas. And nobody's doing throwing baseballs at your face. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, there's an iconic scene, the soda scene, where everybody ends up burping. I don't remember buying this brand of soda. Uh, no, no, Mom. Mom, you are... Uh, Jimmy... It's just soda. Mom, no! Goodness! Excuse me. Boy, it's a scorcher out there. Oh, thanks, you. honey. <laughs> well, at least it's coming out of the attic, not the basement. <laughs> you! Did, did you burp or is this okay. just a hand burp that they came All out right. of? This is, this is the true story of this. I did 
all the burping for all people. <laughs> for everyone. For everybody, everybody in the scene. Yes. That's awesome. So oh, I am, so I, and Mark was really mad about it because <laughs> who plays Hugh, and yeah. because he wanted <laughs> I have this capacity to just with this character I, it's terrible you give me a diet coke and you can make it happen I'm good, for, I'm good to go so phyllis diller oh this is a great i got to tell the story phyllis diller played jimmy's grandma yeah and she's in in and uh, and they're working with her and i'm in the waiting room talking and hanging out with people and they were like megan we need you in here you got a belch for phyllis for grandma okay and come, come, come in I go okay let me get a pop and I get a pop and I go into you know into my space I come in and, and they're directing me okay we need a long you know like give me a couple <laughs> shorts rah, 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 like <laughs> so I'll just, I come out of the booth she stands there she goes kid you're going places <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. because you are so oh. talented in that area oh. if I was wicked talented area yeah mark hated the fact that i got to do all the belching but they used all my belching oh, and they, I, they would direct me to do different sounds in different ways you know yeah, yeah. yeah that is classic. you're a switch hitter and you're expert oh, belcher. Belcher. i have yeah. it on my resume I you should put that yeah you totally um, should put that the the last belt in the movie where i go james isaac newton <laughs> <laughs> there's this laugh that was me really um, laughing at at the belch that i had belch, yeah. it was a huge one and i was just like oh my god that was hilarious and, and they kept it and it, i love it I, it's the end of i have my a reel that i have you know with all my animation on it yeah so go to megan my reels yeah okay. um and the animation one ends with the with the belch and you laughing and a laugh oh yeah. my god oh, that's that awesome classic classic okay we're <laughs> gonna end with your beloved cubs because i was a, growing up i was a big cub fan because i watched wgn you had like ryan yeah. sandberg ron say andre dawson <laughs> shawan dunson awesome. i could go on and right. on yep so for <laughs> you who's a lifetime cubs fan what was it yeah. like when they won the world series in 2016 so i was with my dad I got to watch it with my dad oh, that's in Chicago. Awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. And I mean, we were crying. It was, <laughs> it was so emotional. And, you know, we got to, when we did the, the scene at Wrigley coming through that tunnel yeah. and walking out into Wrigley, you know, that was a religious experience for me. And um, when they won, first of all, I was so mad with that trade when they traded Rizzo and Bryant and um, oh, yeah, Javier yeah. Baez. I mean, I was like, thought, I thought I was gonna like hurt myself. I was so upset. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I got, to, I, I have to, I'm going into another story. I got to play at the Field of Dreams. Oh, wow. And David Ross was my coach. Oh, how cool. And I was on a team with, I mm -hmm. was on the other team. I caught, um, um, oh, I always forget his name. Oh my God, he's a Hall of Famer, and I always forget his name. Why do I do this? Did I write it down? What did he play for? He um, he played for Kansas City. Um, um, Sammy, so not Sammy Sosa. Like Damn it, Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. So he hit a ball into the outfield. I was playing outfield, and it it bounced out of my glove, and I caught it with my hand. <laughs> it was so awesome. So that That's was at Field hilarious. of Dreams, but David Ross, this was right before he became the manager. Right. And, um, and so it was right before where they had won the World Series and <laughs> play. It's on, my, it's on my phone. I can show you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like a little kid. I can't help it. I, there's, there's David Ross. Oh my goodness. Like me and Lori yes. Petty. At the oh, that's so great. Us. I yeah. love it. So awesome. great. That's so great. That reminds me of a little story of, you know, the first time I caught a ball and you'd never caught a ball before oh, yeah. at a baseball game. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was standing there in a sundress with my glove on. I was right behind you. Pudge Rodriguez hit it. It bounced up off the wall. I caught it. Scott says, babe, I was backing you up the whole time. If you didn't have it, I had it. Let's just call it our ball. I said, uh, no, because this is in, my ball. in 40 years of going to a game at the time, I'd never caught a ball, never caught a ball. So, and I, I got have since then, I got Cal Ripken Jr. to sign it. So, you know, that ball sits as that's great. Probably a thorn. Our ball sits there. No, my ball uh, okay. sits there. <laughs> 
Nice try. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you guys, this has been so fun. Thank you. Yeah, Megan, fun memory lane. I can die a happy woman now. Yeah. I can't even see <laughs> how delightful you've been and taking time with us. Fellow Texans, I don't know how you got to Texas, but I'm so glad that we got to talk to you and you have been yes, me too. just the icing on my life of cake. I mean, <laughs> listen, happy anniversary Thank and you may you so have much. many more decades together. Thank you. My Megan. parents are heading into their 70s. That's crazy. Oh, that's awesome. That we yeah. can only dream. Congrats to them. Yeah, we can only dream. I don't know if we play in softball yeah, with you. having 70 year. And you're one of the funniest people I've ever met. So yeah, I just want to say are. that. You're I've great. been I am? Oh, yes. Are, are you talking about Rebecca? No, well, no. She's pretty funny too. Maybe I should, for 30 years, I should probably say you. Yeah, yeah, um, right, yeah. <laughs> Answer right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Uh, <laughs> great, you know, if you, if there's, um, you ever want to do another one, you know, I'm, I would be happy to come on your show. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Megan. You've been delightful. We appreciate wonderful. you so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful rest of your evening. You too. And Take care. Turn the skirt. Yes, That's right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Go Cubs. Bye-bye. Okay, as much as I thought I knew about A League of Their Own, I learned a lot. I know. Right? Didn't you Amazing learn? stories. I know. Just so many cool behind-the-scenes stories that I didn't know. And I'm so happy that she's like, she's intentional about preserving those. She says she tells the stories a lot, which I'm so thankful for. These are stories you want to tell your grandkids. I mean, they're, they're just great. And I found out something I needed to know. What's that? Who belched in the Jimmy Neutron episode? That's right. And now we know. Yeah. Now we know. You're, a, you can sleep well tonight. She's an expert belcher she on top is. of everything else. <laughs> Guys, she was so great. We hope you enjoyed this interview with her. We're going to try to wrangle her up here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area to play some softball with us. There you go. Because the girl can hit. Mm -hmm. Can you picture me coaching first being like, switch sides, Marla. <laughs> switch sides. I want to say that. So we got to make this happen now. This has to happen. Yeah. We're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Hardy Party of Five and a Half as much as we did icing on the cake of life right there. Hardy Party of Five and a Half over and out. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.